this question purposely drill into your understanding of cause, iron cause. But it's kind of like a chapter 23 question. So let's look at it. State Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Ah, yeah. This one, remember, induced EMF is proportional, induced EMF in the coil, like a solenoid, for example, is proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage through the coil. Okay, how fast is this B changing? Increasing, decreasing, whatever it is. Or phi. Oh, I should use phi. How much is this phi changing? Increasing, decreasing. So, how are we going to describe that? Literally what I just said. Induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change. Of what? Ah? Oh, must specify. Of magnetic flux linkage. So, some pass here can give three marks. Sometimes two, where the marks come, is it changes here and there. But usually, induced EMF proportional rate of change. That's one mark. Of who flux linkage is changing. That's the second mark. Okay, then we go to the air core solenoid. An alternating current is passed through an air core solenoid. Okay, suddenly iron core inserted and held stationary. The current in the solenoid is now smaller. What magic is this? Explain why the RMS value of the current is reduced as a result of inserting a core. What? What is going on? Okay, here's a scenario. Before you do anything, there's a solenoid. It's just air core. No, no core, it's just a metal. And you have a magnetic flux that is changing back and forth because you are connected to an AC supply. Okay, so if you if you want to draw a graph, it kind of looks something like, you know, like this. That's the current. And you have a certain RMS. But what happens now is that you are going to insert an iron core. So you still have the same solenoid connected to AC. But now there is a iron core. How to draw iron core? I, I'm just going to pretend that this is the iron core inserted inside. Wrap around the AD. What happened to the field? The field is still there. It's still changing at the same AC, but the core now makes the flux much stronger. So this core makes flux stronger. Because it's easily magnetized, it becomes part of the magnet and it makes the magnetic field very strong. So the problem is, this is a changing magnetic field. The flux, the current keep changing direction, change, change, change. Wow. So if your flux is very strong, that means your graph is going to look very different because now your d phi dt is bigger. Previously, maybe your, your, your flux graph is like this. Flux, flux, flux. Suddenly you put the iron core. Wow, the flux becomes so powerful. Eh? So the rate of change of flux is bigger because of the iron core. So how does that affect the RMS in the solenoid? Why well, it becomes smaller? Or pause the change. Okay, so this smells like an induction question. So how do we talk about this thing? Uh, we will get to the RMS eventually, but we are, the main player is we're looking at the current in the solenoid. We don't care about what what, what what was the current in the flux, a uh, current in the core. What's the current in the solenoid? The coily coily thing. So, uh, what happens when you insert a core? So let's talk about that first. So when the core is inserted, first thing, is there a change in flux? Is the face change in flux? How is that changing? Oh, right. When the core is inserted, the flux linkage through the solenoid increases. Through solenoid increases. Because the iron core makes your B much stronger when you put it in. So now you have, for the same amount of current, you have a very large B that is changing and oscillating. That's number one. So, what happens when there's a flux change? Number two, when we talk about these things, we talk about Faraday's law. Rate of change of flux is proportional to induced EMF. But also, Land's law. This EMF is induced to oppose the change in flux. 
Wow. So how do we how do we how do we sentence this thing? So there is a larger rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. I'm gonna shortcut that into just this dn phi dt. But this means rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. So a larger dn phi dt means or causes a greater induced EMF. In who? In the solenoid. Oh, we're talking about the solenoid. Huh? Solenoid create the fuel. It also can induce current itself. Yeah. It does not like the change in itself, even if it created the fuel in the first place. See, solenoid create the fuel, but it also don't like the change in its own fuel. Ah, yo. So this is what the problem is. Uh. Okay, and what else can we talk about that? Ah, so induced EMF is now greater in the coil, opposing the AC supply. So this AC supply is pushing current. Ma. Now go induce EMF to kick back at the AC supply some more. Wow, so difficult. Why you make life so difficult? And last one, oh, talk about Lenz law. This current, we are talking about current, right? Because current, the toy asking you about current. So this current, induced current in the coil, main player is the coil. This induced current in coil opposes, is fighting against the applied EMF. This is from the AC generator. So current is smaller as you oscillate. So current means, if a current is smaller, means your root mean square current will be smaller. Okay, so think of this. Huh? If you have an air coil, very easy. You just change the flux, change the flux, your current is quite big. But then you put a iron core already. Oh. You change the flux, change the flux. The flux is very big and it's changing. Big flux changing, change the flux. So there's going to be much bigger kickback induced EMF against this to oppose this AC supply, trying to push current. So, pros and cons. Uh. I mean, the nice thing about iron core is you can link it to a secondary coil, but now you got a lot of kickback in your primary coil as well. So, three marks here. First one, if you talk about flux linkage increases. Ah, so this one, larger flux linkage or flux linkage to increase. Ah, that's the first one. B1. So, from there, Faraday's law. Oh, greater induced EMF. Okay, so this is M1. So if got greatest induced EMF means what? This induced EMF is opposing the AC. Lenz law, oppose the change. So oppose applies EMF, so current is smaller. So this induced current opposes the applied EMF. Sorry, this part here. That's part 3. A mark. You must get the M mark in order to get the A. Is that miss? Faraday say induced EMF. Why we say induced current? Well, because induced current is easier to draw. Got EMF, got current, no? Most of the time, la. Some Sometimes, um, there are special cases where we only talk about current because we can see the current very clearly in a loop. So we talk about current. No? Sometimes we can see EMF. So we draw EMF oh, at the voltmeter plus minus, things like that. But oftentimes in solenoid, we will talk about currents. Okay, now this is quite a headache kind of question. You look at it, you're like, Huh? How to do three marks? Follow the general template, of course, in the context of this one. Who are we looking at? The solenoid. So you talk about solenoid. Flux in the solenoid. EMF in the solenoid. Lens law in the solenoid. Okay? So remember this. Iron cores. They are good. They make a very nice, big, strong magnetic field. But your poor own coil will hit itself a little bit more. Have some kind of internal struggle with itself because it doesn't like this huge flux that it is creating and changing. <sighs> Sad life of solenoid. Let's resume to the last part. Practical transformers, very efficient, but they are power losses. Oh, we talked about this in the theory video in the last, very last part. Go check that out if you haven't. It summarizes everything. Where do the power losses come from? Sources. State two sources. The main ones you can talk about is uh, resistive heating in the coil. So all these coils are, they have lots of current flowing through them and the current keeps changing direction and they actually get really hot. Electromagnets get quite hot when you pump current through them. So we can call this resistive heating. 
Where? In the coils. Oh, remember to mention that. Resistive heating in the coils. Mm, what else? Ah? Oh, due to current in the coil. Another problem, a big one, we can talk about is eddy currents in the core. So, heating, some energy is used to heat up the core, eddy currents. Heating due to eddy currents. There's an energy loss there in the iron core. And that is thanks to the magnetic flux inside the core. So, some mysterious magnetic energy is lost as eddy currents in the core. There are a few more possible answers that you can talk about, such as the... Uh, what are the other ones? Ah? Resistive heating, flux, laminated... Oh, this is the main idea already. Though. Okay, so these are the main sources of problems and power loss. Sometimes you say, hey miss, how about the magnetic flux leakage? That one is a thing, but not one of the main concerns because we have the iron core to make sure we don't have so much flux leakage and also uh, we also have many ways to solve it such as maybe you wrap the coil on top of each other lah. this is a primary coil you put the iron core there then you take a secondary coil and you wrap on top of the primary coil lah. so these kind of methods can very easily reduce magnetic flux le leakage a lot uh, but yeah, these two are the main ones that I will always in remind you to include. Heating in coils due to current and eddy currents in the core. So two marks here is B1 and B1. Okay, I think that's all. Uh, B2, la, B1, B2. So that's all for this question. Uh, deep dive into what does the iron core actually do or affect? Or how does it affect others and affect itself, its own coil? Remember to know, think about iron cores. And, of course, a reminder of how you can lose some energy in transformers. So, that's all for this video. Hope that was helpful in understanding transformers. Go check out the, another examples in our list. And I will see you in the next theory section. That's all for this video. See you in the next one.